Okay, welcome to uh, another live stream video here for anyone that joins in or anyone that's watching this on replay because I don't announce these. <laughs> but okay, so what I'm doing here, and I'll be repeating this throughout the video for people joining in at various times, but someone uh, was mentioning um, doing realistic types of um, applications of uh, the stamps. And I totally get where they're coming from. They, they want to reference nature and they want to do some scenes that kind of look or have natural looking elements to it as opposed to maybe more fantasy or whatnot. Hello, Diana, how are you today? Um, but uh, I was mentioning to them that um, I don't necessarily go for realism in my scenes at all. Um, I'm kind of more focused in on, um, oh, I don't know, expressionism, impressionism, and whatnot. Now, I might do some things that uh, where that might kind of look realistic in nature. I want want to make a realistic looking rock or something like that, but I don't. I, I'm not thinking of realism or something of that sort because I just think it's it's just easier to do. Um, why do something um, and go for something that a camera can do so much easier in the 60th of a second. I'm really good today. Thank you. Um, hello, Karen. How are you today? Um, all right. So here's what I was mentioning to this individual. Um, I, I, they were showing a scene that they did and um, the, the coloring of their scene was more kind of along the lines of... Um, like animation, like classic Disney animation, the masters of animation and whatnot. You know, their their grass area was kind of a bright green. Hello, Sandy. Thanks for joining in. Um, and I, I referenced um, an artist that I really like uh, by the name of Ivan Earl. If you're familiar with um, Sleeping Beauty, um, he's the one that pretty much single-handedly did all of the backgrounds for that movie. And... Um, just amazing. Um, he kind of set the tone for kind of Disney animation and kind of how it looks even today um, or to this day. So um, I'm doing something uh, referencing one of my favorite pieces by him called The Red Barn, and he's done several different versions of it. Hello, CM Hawkins. Good to see you. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, now that coupled with the, uh, someone, I don't know, maybe it was one of you, um, that mentioned the slimline card or reminded me of a slimline mirror card. So I have formatted a slimline mirror card here. Okay. Now this is going to be easy enough to do. There's just more space on this. Um, this is a half sheet right here. So I just formatted my half sheet. I folded this down the middle. This is a piece of, um, silk which is a semi-gloss cardstock, okay, but the semi-gloss, it's much, it's dull, okay, it's not shiny at all, it's much closer to a matte, and I've just already pre-positioned my um, silver cardstock down below. Um, Karen can't sleep, I'll put her to sleep uh, instantly here, I'll, put, I'll have you sleeping in no time, Karen. <laughs> just keep listening to me, watch, or watching the vid. Um, yeah, uh, let's see, what is that? Six, so that's seven out, uh, wait, no, wait, six, seven, eight, nine. You're nine out, nine hours difference from, uh, from me. So uh, what country is that again? All right, so, uh, slimline format here. All right, now I'm doing a, th this is going to be a really choppy video, I believe, because I, I don't, if I've done this scene before, it's been a long time, or even kind of close to it. Hello, Sherry. Um, so, uh, well, you don't have to give me some slack, but uh, but just a, a warning ahead of time, okay? I'm trying to conceive of how I'm going to put this one together. Okay, so here's my theory. Okay, now, I don't have it all worked out, but just in general, this is going to be this red barn, okay? Sitting amongst this, uh, again, this is a half page scene right here. There's going to be a little bit of horizon line. It's going to be in the snow, I think. I <laughs> See, I don't even know that for sure. And there's going to be a horizon line in here, okay? And then I'm going to have some really dark trees here in the foreground, okay? I think that will 
be, and again, this is kind of in the spirit of that, uh, of that uh, Ivan Earl painting, okay? I'll put the name of the person right down here. Hello, Sandy. I already said, or I already said that, Sandy. Okay, I'm just reading that right there. Again. Okay, Ivan Earl. Earl. Uh, reference. Well, we'll try to keep you up, but not too long, though. If that's past your uh, normal bedtime, Karen. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't know. You kind of get the idea here. Dark, uh, dark trees. Okay, nice and bold in the foreground. Okay, nice red barn in the snow. All right, and uh, let's see. Those will, I, I don't know, I thought they might be cool reflected in this. Maybe, maybe it's like right next to a stream down here or something like that. Okay, but anyways, that, you know, that being said, if you ever uh, check out some stuff by Ivan Durrell, um, it's uh, really awesome stuff. Um, and uh, different too, you know. So a lot of people, when they think of scenes or something like that, a lot of times they're thinking about photographs. And I, you know, I totally get it. You know, landscape photography and everything like that is really cool. But again, there's all kinds of different landscapes that you can do and different styles. I think some of the most amazing um, artwork these days is done in the realms of advertising, um, animation, you know, the, all those Disney films. Um, like, uh, I don't know, you know, Frozen, Brave, um, I don't know, whatnot. Hello, Jason. Good to see you. Um, I don't know. Even like a Maleficent, that was an animation, but um, a lot of graphics in that one. Just amazing, evocative um, environments. So look to those types of things in terms of um, inspiration as well as like your classic landscape painters. These days you can look up all this stuff online the Hudson River School of um, Landscape Painting is one of my favorite um, kind of genres of uh, painting. And I refer people to that a lot of times too. But yeah, there's all kinds of different looks. Not to mention things like expressionism and impressionism, you know, with, whoa, you know, Monet and uh, I don't know of anyone doing like a Van Gogh type of thing, but uh, Sandy, I'm using tack and peel. It's not A-N-D, it's like apostrophe N, tack and peel. And that's um, by Sukaneko. And there's a whole, I have like three videos um, of that. Plus you can find all kinds of other videos online with that, but there's a lot of information in the information section of the website under the materials FAQ FAQ, you know, the frequently asked questions. But it's really fantastic, see? You put that on there and it has this tackiness to it. You see, this is a pretty big block too, and it just sticks like that. But you can put your things right on there. Temporary bond, right? Stamp it out. Peel it off, you're all set. This gets dusty over time. You can see mine's really quite dusty and whatnot. It's not quite as clear anymore, but this is probably 15 years old. You just wash it off anytime it gets too dusty. I like it a little bit not and tacky because when you wash this off, it gets like as tacky as it was like from the day you bought it and it's like really, really tacky, which is good, you know? We want these things to last, right? But that's what I have on all my blocks like that. See, here's my little stamp like that. Oh, I don't know. Little tiny blocks with tiny stamps on it. I even have one block that's just dedicated to um, one whole sheet of tack and peel. But that's, uh, speaking of that, that's a, it's a, uh, it's a central mounting um, type of system, right? Now I do like I I like cling foam stamps and everything like that. I you know, like my this set right here is it's all on cling foam. 
but um, you know you have to have a piece of cling on each one of your stamps right but if you're using tack and peel it's a central um, mounting system so you have your uh, mounting material on the blocks instead of on every single stamp okay now you can use these blocks too with your cling stamps too you can just put it right on there and it's ready to go or you use your other side of your <laughs> block and it's ready to go okay all right so here's what here's the thing that i'm wondering about i want to have a horizon line on here um hello debbie good to see you hello cheryl um I'm going to put a horizon line in here. I thought about just cutting out some paper just, um, you know, by hand, but I think I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to use my, this is called a French curve right here. And I think I'm just going to do a cutout of this one just to make it a little bit more graceful than me doing just something by hand. So I'm just going to go like that. Or I can alter it a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit too swoopy. So I'll go like that, you know. You can kind of alter these around however you want. And let's see, let's cut this out. I have to, let me see, I'm going to be coloring in that way. So I'm not going to, this doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but this is my, here's my snow template, you know? There's going to be a, like a horizon line template being sold online by someone and it's going to be a cutout paper, not me. <laughs> I always joke about that. I was mentioning that to someone on Facebook. They like the fact that I'm just using some paper towels and things like that and standard, you know, household items um, for a... Uh, uh, my applicators and whatnot. Hello, Beverly. All right, let's see here. What would make a good horizon now? Okay, so remember, uh, if you just logged on, this is going to be snow down here. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I don't do this a lot, so I'm gonna have to, you know, I usually try to blend things in really well, right? Well, this is kind of like not blending it in. And, uh, you know, we'll see what that looks like. It's kind of going for a little bit more of a, like a graphic statement or something, you know. Okay. I love the French curves, Jason. I used to buy, I bought, when I was a student, I bought every French curve there was. There's not a whole lot out there on the market. I mean, if I have 10 of them, that's, that was all that I could find back then. And they were using them a lot more back then. Well, I don't know. Maybe there's whole kits of them these days for a couple bucks, but that was the largest one that I ever found. Okay. So I'm conditioning my, my, my applicator, my high tech applicator like this. Okay. It's kind of like taking like a, it feels like a, I don't know, like a chamois or something now, if you kind of, you know, work it a little bit. I don't always do that, but. On this one right here, I'm going to have a ton of this space in here. All right. So, all right. So when you have a lot of space, what I always recommend it are is to use reinkers, right? If you have them. And if you don't have them, if you're doing a lot of toning and that type of thing, you know, it's I definitely uh, recommend it in your lighter values. Your lighter values tend to be your um, base coats and those get the most amount of coverage. Okay, so you don't need to get like right ringers you know, like for every color in your in your uh, uh, whatever repertoire of, uh, you know, ink supplies, etc. But I'm looking for my, I'm looking for my uh, oh, here we go. That's what I need right there. The summer sky. Here's summer sky in London fog with memento. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start this off really light. You know, better start. In my opinion, it's be it's better to start light because you you don't make as big of a commitment to a certain tone. You can kind of see if you like it, and then you can always go darker. It's like adding salt to food. <laughs> you can always add more, right? Okay, so 
Um, that doesn't look really light, but Summer Sky is pretty light. All right. You can even mix and match. You know, you can go Summer Sky, go London Fog. If I'm going to use them both, you know, I don't know, you can mix them. I, I never do that, but, you know, I just thought, oh, we probably could do that. All right. So uh, let's find a good kind of line for this. All right. So I'm going to have my trees like right in here. So let's go high enough in the background, like about like so. I'm trying to think of um, the way my um, uh, tree, tr uh, tree trunks and the mirrored aspect of this foil mirror card will come into play too. So um, I don't know. I'm thinking about that a little bit, not a lot right now. I don't know if it'll affect, you know, what I'm doing here too much, but, you know, I don't know, something like that. Okay, that's going to be the snow. <laughs> Hello, uh, Pen, 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 A, is that, I don't know how you pronounce your name. Good, uh, thanks for all the comments, too. I mentioned it, Pen, you know, uh, to her, she did, she tried to, uh, the, the pieces out, and I said, hey, don't uh fuss over your placement of imagery you know you gotta you want to overlap you gotta have to if you're used to working stamps in a certain way usually outline stamps okay you gotta kind of remove some of those really good habits that you've developed with outline stamps like uh placement so um sometimes um when people first start using their stamps um hello donna thanks for joining in um yeah, you gotta have to get rid of that um, kind of notion of stamp placement. Um, when everyone starts using stampscapes at first, and this is completely understandable, um, they use really good habits, the stuff that they've developed in terms of placing things, and they're thinking about placing things edge to edge usually, okay? Uh, and um, Penny got it. Um, you don't want to go, you don't want to approach the designs like they're, um, like a puzzles or something like that. Like you do with, you know, outline designs. You don't want to have a bunch of these outlines everywhere showing. So with these, you want to overlap them quarter inch or so, um, half inch, if not more, you know, some of the larger stamps you're, you're going a good, um, one inch overlap like sky figures or something of that sort hello not afraid of color good to see you hello roxanne roxanne saw my first video you mean my first ever video or you mean you saw the first stampscapes video you recently i was trying to think i was telling my i was writing to my brother in an email and uh, we were talking about um, kind of the first videos that I did. I was just talking about it last night. I was looking to see, I was trying to think of when my first um, uh, video was. Okay, now this is, okay, if you just logged in, this, what I'm doing is, um, this is your silk cardstock. So it's very similar to a matte cardstock. You can see it's has a little bit of shine, sheen to it, but it's not like glossy at all, okay? So this, when I'm doing this right here, it's a lot more absorbent than say a glossy cardstock, okay? So I'm blending this in like this and it's really sucking up the, uh, the ink, but that's where these um, reinkers really come in handy. You have a lot of ink in here, so it's easy to kind of drag out. If you have very little on here and you're going kind of dry brushing, you know, dry applying, it's not a brush, but um, you're kind of dry applying ink into a very absorbent dry paper and it can feel kind of awkward, you know what I mean? But now see, this is getting fairly saturated with ink, all right? And the surface and pulp of the paper becomes a little bit wet and that's the thing that makes it easier to blend in your colors. I might have to keep going back and, and adding more of this you know, your lighter colors. And as a matter of fact, now see how this is all colored in like that. I think I'm going to leave some areas a little bit kind of streaky like that. But let me go back in and just add a little bit more of this. 
summer sky, okay? And again, this just because this is fairly large, okay? So you're not only just coloring with this color right here, but we're kind of, um, I wouldn't say super saturating, but kind of getting there a little bit, you know? And that's going to be the thing that allows me to apply the other colors to come much more uh, smoothly, gracefully. Let me see if I can show you this right here too. See so this area right here? Again, remember this is a pretty matte paper, but see, I don't know. Can you see where my finger removed some ink like that? That gives you the idea of how much ink. See that right there? How much ink is kind of just floating on the surface like that, okay? Hello, Donna. Okay. So, okay, so that being said, when you have floating ink on there, that's like floating moisture. Um, that is going to allow other moisture, i.e. other inks, right, to glide along on that. Now, this is drying as I'm kind of blabbing away here, but um, I really want to get that idea down. You know, it's not just coloring, but really saturating the page like that. This is a half uh, page here, uh, Debbie, so pretty big. Um, in this case, uh, someone was mentioning a slim line. I mean, and I didn't have to go, I guess I didn't have to go half page slim line, but, um, um, I don't know. I just figured it was easy. Cut the pink, you know, cut the paper in half one way. I don't have to do any measuring at all and whatnot. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to transition this a little bit going from lighter to darker up there. Okay. But I want to keep it a little bit streaky, too, because this will kind of give, you know, kind of a, a feeling of weather. Oh, someone was mentioning um, uh, wind yesterday in that live stream, right? So I'm kind of doing that streakiness like that and leaving more streaks in that application like that. All right. My uh, paper towel is totally fraying here, as you can see. I don't know, maybe maybe kind of... You know, softening it up wasn't, you know, uh, so good. <laughs> it's all crumbly on there. But, you know, what do we do? We just wipe it off, right? I should keep this, right, as my, uh, as my snow, snow horizon template. Okay. Going in with uh, a darker blue right here. Okay. Uh, if you've just uh, logged on or any, any time within the last 15 minutes, actually, what I'm doing is I'm going to create this um, scene like this with some really bold um, tree trunks in here, a la the, uh, the artist named Ivan Earl, kind of in that spirit of a couple of things. But we're, we're going to couple that with this mirror construction, okay? I'm not going to do mirror cards for the rest of my life or anything like that on every scene, but, you know, when I get doing things like that. Sometimes I kind of get hooked into it and, you know, I get obsessed for a couple days with a certain new, or just, I don't know, returning look, kind of experimenting, you know, when I see new, when I see something different, I get really excited about it. And, uh, you know, I don't know, for like a couple days, it's like total kind of immersion in, in that, uh, um, I don't know, whatever technique or um, media combination or something like that. Uh, the barn, eh, the barn's about four and a half inches wide. Well, about four inches wide. The mount is a four and a half inch stamp. So, um, yeah, it's the same as these ones like that. Okay. All right, so adding a little bit more of a stronger horizon like that. So save your template, right? And we'll go like this. You know, think about vignetting, kind of making the edges a little bit darker, right? Let's go like that. All right. Oklahoma sky. There you go. I've been to Oklahoma once. Oh, gosh. What was the name of the city that I taught in? Um, hmm. I don't remember. I think, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. The store name, though, was And Bear Makes Three. I think I did break the fibers down, huh? Okay, so let's see here. OK. 
okay, coming in like so. There we go, like that. It's kind of anchoring it down a little bit more. Remember, this is not going to be one of those scenes where everything is kind of all, I don't think, blended together, okay? I mean, I might decide to do that later on, but kind of that's not the concept going into it. All right, so a little bit of wind there like that, right? If not kind of snow flurry. I think that's going a little bit too dark too soon, though. Let me go back to this blue right here. I think I can get darker using that. Well, some of that other blue's on there, too, but let's go with this one right here. I might kind of mellow this out a little bit with the white pigment ink after, though, if I get too sloppy with this. And I do get sloppy all the time, okay? Hello in Maine! Welcome. Good to see you, as always. For those in the uh, checking out the vid, not commenting, uh, thanks to all of you for, uh, you know, kind of joining in and checking out the video as well. All right. Okay. I know we're getting into spring and I don't know, people, you know, it's like if, you, if you're dealing with this type of weather, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, for a few months of the year, you don't necessarily want to see this, but um, uh, ideas for the, you know, future or whatnot. Okay, let's see here. All right, look at that paper, you know, that paper towel right there. It's really uh, chewed up here. Okay, so I might just stop at that for right now, okay? And start working on some other things in here. Okay, so again, the theory is, if you've just joined in, these are gonna be some real bold, um, um, where'd my other tree go? I lost my tree, where'd the tree trunk trio go? Oh my gosh, oh, okay, here we go. All right, so it's going to be something like this. There's going to be some trees in here stamped really boldly, okay? in here, like about like so, this and another one out here. And that's going to be, in theory, reflected down in this water. So we're going to make this into like this little uh, creek side area down here. We'll put in some images down here and we'll try to make that barn stand out as a nice bold statement, okay? But, uh, well, I don't know, we'll put some um, other things in the background here. Actually, okay, I forgot I was going to do that. Let's do that right now. Okay, so in my second workshop, one of the things that we do is we um, uh, we create depth with the use of um, values, okay? So um, with whatever color scheme you're working in, in a given area, okay, um, we're going to use some of those colors to create depth with by the utilization of those colors on the images okay you can you know you can use your colors to create depth in the background to hopefully that sky looks like there's a little bit of depth just with the use of those varied tones but you can apply those colors to your images as well okay now i don't want these image you know this uh to stand out too much okay because again i want to keep things fairly simple because i don't want to have too many things going on for that reflection down below it's like i said in the previous video i think it's better if we kind of leave certain types of things um kind of bare in anticipation of that reflection down in the the water area if it gets too busy up above on this scene sometimes it just doesn't stand out or it gets a little bit cluttered in that bottom area Ah, uh, that's a good idea, Candy. Yeah. The one that I, I, yeah, sometimes under my scene, I've done, I've stamped on a Teflon thing before, and then it's so wet, I, I got inky all over my, my fingers and things like that, and then under my scene as well. Uh, so I stopped using the Teflon, um, but that sounds like a good idea, though. Don, go get uh, go get bundled up. This is going to get colder here. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Trees like this. Oh, okay. So this is in you know a light blue, salvia blue, and it's because these will show up 
in that lighter area, okay? It's still, you know, the white of the paper like that, so a light color will show up. If it's like all this color over here and I try to stamp those trees over that, I don't think it's going to show, right? You can always try it in a light color first, and then if it doesn't show, you can always go darker, though. Okay, so let's put some a little bit behind that tree as well. So here, let's go like this. We'll mask off that. You notice how I'm, you know, have that little bit of space, maybe even more like that. Okay, so you have to undermask a little bit. I'm going to try to get that tree on that line. Maybe that's too much. <laughs> I don't know. If it goes over a little bit, who cares? Okay, so let's see here. What is in these trees? Oh, right here, I'm stamping on two layers of paper. Okay, I'm going to have that rooftop show a little bit more like that. We'll go like this. Okay. I'm going to stand up for this one. You know, because of that layering of ink right there, I want to get this, the impression where it's masked off like this underneath here uh, with good pressure. Okay, eh, close enough. And let's go with a, we'll go with a couple more of these. Or I don't know, one or two more. How about over here? Like about like so. Masking. We don't fuss with placement or certainly with masking. I guess you could, but I don't, I don't like to. Uh, yeah, send me some snow. Any kind of moisture, we're good with that in California. Actually, it snows. I can go snow hiking here. One of the good things about Southern California is you can be hiking. You can be surfing during the day, going on a hike in the snow in the afternoon, and, I don't know, camping out in the desert sometimes. S uh, ski or snowshoe in Maine. Oh, that would be amazing. One thing that I didn't do in Acadia is I didn't go on those, um, what do you call it, horse carriage, horse carriage trails or whatever uh, when I was there. What I'm referring to everyone is, a, um, I was mentioning uh, Maine. I daydream every time I see Maine anywhere. Uh, if I'm sending out some stamps to anyone, because um, I hiked, I feel like I had Acadia National Park all to myself, because I hiked there for a week, and I never saw anyone on any of the trails, except for um, some rangers doing some trail maintenance. That place was so empty. Not anymore. No, no, uh, you gotta wait, to, you gotta get in the, in, the, in the line to get into these national parks these days. I'm glad everyone's out there enjoying them, but um, man, it's so crowded these days. Okay, so there's some um, trees in the background. And again, I, I'm keeping them really light like that, you know, because they're going to be, I don't want to have things too cluttered down there. So see that like that? You know, I don't want to, you know, darken up this area too much right here. Just in the spirit of these, you know, these, uh, what are, you know, mirror card constructions. Uh, you kind of keep it a little bit more simple, I think. The snow cleared out in Ontario. Is that that's it for the uh, that's it for the year then, uh, Donna? I checked the uh, I checked the uh, um, webcams of uh, this place called Mount San Jacinto in uh, Southern California because that's where I would go if I want to do some like snowshoeing. That um, San Jacinto gets up to uh, like 10,500 feet or something like that. So anything from like 7,000 and up is snow. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go with a little bit more tone on the top here. I was going to move into a little bit of vi... Let's get rid of this one. All right. Okay, here we go. I guess we can uh, we can move into a new applicator right 
Everyone always asks me about this. I don't, I don't know. I, sh I should mention it when I post things like on Facebook, but everyone wants to know, what are you using, you know? Because they just see me doing this and it's kind of hard to tell. And my usual response is, um, you know, sometimes the best applicators are kind of the, you know, the most simple of, I don't know, items. I, the, I didn't, one of the things I didn't get to was a uh, Katahdin. I was thinking about that, um, but I got stuck in Acadia and I wasn't moving from there. Okay, let's see, that, that doesn't even show up there, I know. That was um, deep lilac. So anytime you're applying some colors that are lighter than the ones that are already um, have been applied, sometimes you can't see anything. This is not a dry pad though. Let me see if you can see that a little bit. Eh. All right, folks, I haven't done this kind of technique in a long time, so it's, uh, it's taken me a little bit longer. <laughs> in terms of application. It's because I'm having to think about it a lot here and kind of analyze a little bit. See, I'm getting a little bit of smudgies over here, so I'm thinking I should probably come in. Well, you know, actually, let's come into that color with this. I should probably use some blue too because I don't want this area down here just to be like stark white. Um, so let's just bring it down here. So see, I'm, I'm getting a little smudgy fingerprints, so you just kind of go with it, right? Oh yeah, Victorville. You were camping by Victor. Victorville is probably up at about four thousand feet. I'm guessing. Yeah, uh, Victorville is in California, and it's like if people in Southern California are driving like from here to Las Vegas, you would go through Victorville. I'm telling that to everyone here. You know, that doesn't know Victorville. Um, but yeah, that Cajon Pass there gets snow a lot. Well, not a lot, but you know, usually every year at some point in time. All right, let's see. Okay, so it's just kind of framing this off a little bit. This will be needed, I think, underneath that barn too. Should we do it right now? Yeah, maybe. Um, let's see. Uh-oh, Debbie, your hands are worn out. Why are your hands worn out? Are you on the keyboard too much or something or something at work? One of the things that I'm always doing, and I'm always kind of, I don't know if I'm preaching it, but um, I'm always mentioning with something like this, you always want to keep it in the direction at which you are applying it. Yeah, that's correct. The high desert, it's usually about 4,000 feet. That's kind of the elevation of a lot of the uh, the deserts here in uh in California, Southern California, and Mojave Desert and Joshua Tree. Um, not really Death Valley. Some areas of Death Valley, yeah, but um, let's see. Uh, Anza Borrego, they're all about 4,000 feet in general. Okay, so I'm adding this in here. I don't want to get rid of all my snow, okay? I just want to have some shading in here. That barn is going to have to be addressed, okay? Of course. But let's go like that, all right? I think the pale, pale, what was this again? Pale, deep lilac, okay? That's looking pretty decent. It's looking a little bit kind of unrelated to the rest of the area, though. So let's go back in with some summer sky and we'll add that summer sky in, you know, in conjunction with the, I keep forgetting the name of that one. What is that one again? Deep, deep lilac, all these uh, color names from these different companies. Okay, so summer sky. If you just logged on or you haven't seen me do this before, it's just easier to apply um, re inkerings a lot of times if you're getting a lot of coverage, okay? And Let's see, let's go in like this. 
And yeah, a little bit more of a kind of continuity between the lilac and that blue. Doesn't have to be a lot of continuity, but some is usually better than none. Okay. I'll give a little bit of a kind of a base to this so that when this transitions into the foil part down below, um, uh, it'll have a little bit more of a, a shade. I just saw that um, salt and sea comment there and where did that go? I don't know if that would be a good idea. Oh, yeah, not afraid of color. You mentioned that. It's so dusty and windy there, and it's like a, everyone's, like, all the kids in that area are getting, like, have, like, a high degree of, like, I think it was asthma or something like that. Um, I love the area, though, but it, uh, I just don't know about uh, the, the health aspect of it. Okay, so adding that in, see how that's kind of coming around? It's kind of getting a little bit of a glow, though, isn't it? It's kind of analogous colors. When you put analogous colors next to each other, it creates a little bit of a color glow. This wouldn't even be bad with a little tinge of uh, warmth, but yeah. 50 years of office work and crafting. Got it. We got to undo that, uh, undo your, you know, your things, you know, work in a nice kind of uh, ergonomic uh, method. I would miss Maine too. I miss Maine from just visiting it. Um, you know, I, I love California. I I love the deserts and everything like that and the variety, but, um, uh, and I don't know if I can handle Maine in the winter time like you guys, you know, you guys are tough, you know. Um, but my gosh, that Maine in the fall is spectacular. I love fall in the Sierras out here too and everything like that, but um, yeah. Okay, so I've never seen a scorpion out in the desert, but if I'm sure if I was going around flipping over rocks and stuff like that, I would. Um, okay, so let's see here. Let's go with a little bit more tone up top. Here's the thing. Okay, I already went with these two blues up here. It doesn't look that dark, though, because it was so wet up here, it just wasn't accepting any more of the inks, okay? So it, you, you have to kind of gauge if it's kind of dry or not. If it's too dry, you know, I, I don't <laughs> I don't want to torture you guys and have to go back with yet another kind of uh, application of, uh, you know, that lightest of blue again. But sometimes you might if it's get you know. And again, this is on a matte piece of paper, so it's, you know, my colors, my inks aren't going as far as they would on a matte, uh, piece of glossy because the glossy wouldn't be quite as absorbent, okay? Okay, so adding in like so. Now it's giving a little bit more of a horizon, you know, kind of framing maybe like that. Okay. Hello, Froggy Fresh. Good to see you. I, I follow this um, guy on Flickr that's camping out at the, um, he's camping out over in uh, the Salton Sea all the time in his camper. And he's always taking these kind of night photography shots, you know, those like star trails and everything like that. And I want to go out there. There's this, there's this art in area where there's a bunch of art installations, you know, just by done, you know, artists and whatnot. It's uh it's kind of interesting. There's like a swing set out in the lake, you know, someone put and I don't know, different sculptures and things like that. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Let's see. Let's go with black up top here. Okay. It's not really going to be black though. It's just a light shade of gray. Okay. Because I'm applying it in kind of a this streaky kind of a dry brush type of um, application all right it'll just kind of uh, frame this the edges off 
which I think it might need because this piece is going to be, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to go for a very bold look here. And again, if you've just joined in, it's uh, this artist named Ivan Earl, which I'm not channeling, you know, he's a master artist and whatnot, but uh, kind of in the spirit of one of his uh, kind of um, series of prints called the Red Barn. Okay, let's see. Candy had a scorpion crawl in bed with her. My gosh. Wow. That is scary. Sometimes people, like kids in uh, classes or something like that, um, go out to uh, the deserts and they're doing research and they take a black light out there and spot um, uh, scorpions. It's kind of interesting. Uh, seeing them kind of glow like that. I don't know what it is. I don't know, it's, it doesn't seem like a scorpion would have this kind of phosphorescent kind of quality to them, but uh, they seem to. All right, so I'm going to do this red bar. Now, this is going to stand out like super, super bold and unrelated, okay? That's what I'm not used to doing most of the time, or really hardly ever. I've tried it before. I've referenced that um, piece and um, that barn series. Okay, I have a peach Bellini. Anyone remember the Adirondack Lights line of colors from Ranger? Uh, it was called uh, Seashells, and then it turned into Adirondack Lights, okay? And they're very light um, tones here, okay? They're shadow stamping inks, basically, which no one used, <laughs> except for me, you know, to give my base layers of color, all right? And that, you know, like I said, it was called seashells and no one was buying seashells at all. So they re, re-termed them um, or re, uh, whatever you call it. Uh, they marketed it differently because Adirondacks was so popular, but these colors are so light, you can barely see them, okay? But this will be a good base color for my barn, I think. Okay, so um, let's see here. No scorpions in Canada, too cold for that. Uh, let's see, okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of masking off here. I don't want this, you know, red up in the sky or something like that, so let's just start toning in like this. Now, even this isn't red, but it's a good base color to start off with, okay? All right, so adding in, I'm going to be careful about my perimeters, you know, where I would go into the white of the snow with this. I mean, you can go in with a little bit, but I wouldn't go into a lot in doing this scene at least, okay? But this is, see, this is my base layer. So if, instead of going in with like a, a brick red or something like that, you start off with something kind of lighter like this in the same kind of color family of it. And then you can progress in, you know, incrementally get darker with whatever media you want. Okay. All right. Actually, I'm adding that in. I was thinking maybe I'll go with like snow on the top of this. I don't know. Maybe I will. I shouldn't have colored it then, then. <laughs> but that's where the white pigment ink comes in, right? You can, you know, you can alter things around with that. Okay. So that's my peach Bellini. A lighter version of red is pink, right? So we're going to go with that too. Okay. I used to go, um, you know, I used to go hiking in the deserts at all times and people used to ask me about snakes and, uh, I, you know, I saw snakes out there maybe like three times in like, I don't know, a hundred trips out there, but, um, in like the foothills, where there's a lot more grass and stuff. I used to go hiking after work, uh, after I get done from work a lot. And during certain times of year, um, this at least in this one season, I saw, or, there was a rattlesnake on every single hike that I went out there on, like for weeks. And one time there were two of them mating, doing this kind of like rattlesnake dance. It was interesting. It kept intertwining and untwining and intertwining, you know? Never seen anything like that live. I don't think I even saw a video of it before. It's kind of interesting. 
Okay, I can barely, this pink isn't doing anything. I think it because it's a little bit dry, okay? So, yeah, we'll just keep trying here. It's a little tinge of it, barely. But again, it's a, it's a really safe color to start off with because it's barely showing there in that red tinge, right? Okay, let's see. I didn't see what some what it, like giant hands crossing the roads. We stayed in the car. I worry about mountain lions. That's the only what did someone what uh Oh, filled with huge tarantulas. Ah. Huh. I guess there's there you know, I grew up in uh, central the central coast of California and there is supposed to be um tarantulas out there all the time and I'd, sometimes I'd see them on the road you know when I found out oh there's tarantulas out there but you know we used to go hiking all the time out there as kids and we called them the fields it was just the chaparral and I never saw a tarantula out there and we did that a lot we were out there all the time you know it's like show up you know around dinner time but we'd be gone all the time you can do that back then. I don't know. I think these days, I don't know. Parents would be freaked out if they don't see their kid for like, you know, eight hours or whatever. Okay, so here comes some other red like that. I'm kind of building it up, so hopefully we get some good tones out of that. Uh, yeah, mountain lines, though, that's what I worry about. I didn't used to worry about it, but then on a couple of the different hikes that I used to go on in Southern California, well, one of them, there was like a mountain lion attack on these mountain bikers that were out there. Uh, there was one gal getting dragged out into the, uh, the trees with her friend throwing rocks at this uh, mountain lion. And then when the, the trackers came out, they found out about this. There's uh, some trackers that came out and they, um, in looking for that mountain lion, um, and it's a really big popular hike in Southern California, um, Whiting Ranch it was called, and uh, they found this other mountain biker that had been missing like the previous week, but I don't know, I guess they never looked into it. He was like, a, you know, dead from being attacked by that same mountain lion. Oh, and then going out to Joshua Tree. Um, one time, I found this really cool water source out in Joshua Tree in this area that just no one ever hikes to. And I took my friends like two weeks later, and there were two sets of freshly killed bighorn sheep horns right next to the water. I'm thinking this is like a a uh, um like a killing zone, you know, right next to the water. It makes sense, right? There was like fresh meat on those bones. It's like, okay, I'm never coming out here by myself again, you know? And those those two instances were kind of right around the same um, time. Okay. So we're speaking about, so we're watching this uh, stamping video here and we're talking about people getting eaten. <laughs> I guess it is part of nature, huh? Scenic stamping, stamping nature. I think about uh, like tarantulas migrating, but I love it though, you know. I love the convo. All right, here comes the red here. It's kind of looking fairly weathered. Okay, now say, here's the thing about kind of layering your colors, okay? So this is this is just Marvy red, okay? So if I was just to just use Marvy red, okay? All right. It's that color right there. 
right? But see how much richer you can get, you know, with the blending of tones and whatnot. And dive stinks are all transparent colors, so... You know, kind of just moving through those, even though you might be covering up something completely that you've already applied, you're not... All those different tones in there aren't being lost, okay? It's not a lost, you know, kind of a process or whatnot layer, okay? They're going to be influencing the end result in terms of a potentially much richer looking um, piece. All right, and then that, in doing it like that way too, the thing for me is um, I can just kind of keep building something towards a direction that I want something maybe to look, okay? And I can start um, doing, I'll add, yeah, I'll add an animal in this scene in the end. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find my tarantula stamp. I'm joking. I don't have one. We do have some wolves, though. Okay, let's go with this kind of real red red. Okay, so if you're going with something that's really a lot, or you know, quite a bit darker, brighter, etc., use a much lighter version of it so you can just apply, you know, I don't know, whatever, a 5% version of it and see if you like it. Oh, that's funny, Candy. <laughs> I watch these YouTube videos of like, I don't know, kind of bear, you know, bear, mother cub and, you know, enjoying someone's pool or something like that. Or, so you know, they're on the, the back porch. All these different wildlife, though, you know, there's so many things out there. There's so many things that I haven't seen, too, that are all around. I saw my first... I've done a lot of hiking in my life, and I only saw my first bobcat, um, I don't know, it was probably about 10 years ago or something like that. Never saw one in the desert anywhere. Um, saw one on this trail um, that I was hiking on with my son. It was like, oh my god, that was a bobcat, you know? Saw my first desert tortoise a few years ago in Anza Borrego. That was really cool. I have always wanted to see one for years and years and years, hiking around out in the deserts. And then all of a sudden we saw one, like two of them within like, I don't know, 20 feet from each other. And, oh, there's another one right there. Those ones were in uh, Anza Borrego during uh, this, like, I don't know what they call it, super bloom, you know, when there's a lot, been a lot of rain that year. Okay, so adding in here, this is like the, I don't know, the most amount of masking that I ever do, like that. So there we have that, okay. Let's see what that's going to look like. Um, if that's going to be nice and bold against my mirrored area like this, okay. Yeah, I think that stands out reasonably well. Okay, so the pens are, you know, they're good to, for, up to an extent, but uh, let me see here. Let me grab out some kind of much more detail-oriented types of materials right here, okay? Uh, in the form of my pens, you know, I've used kind of roughly those same colors on here, right, with the inks. Why not use your other pens like here? So um, let's see. Anne-Marie, do, do you have a pet garter snake? That's cool, if so. I had a friend um, growing up whose brother, man, he just was able to spot, he had amazing eyes, so when we'd go hiking out in that chaparral, he'd be always coming back with um, snakes. Uh, and when we went out with him too, sometimes, he was older, so we didn't hang out with them too much, you know, the younger guys, but and he could spot like a snake and, you know, we'd all be walking along. No one saw it. And he's, you know, he spots it right away. But I think he used to get some garter snakes. Garters, gophers, racers. We never saw um, around where we lived. I don't think we ever saw any um, rattlesnakes, though. Okay, this is a really super bright red. I need to be a little bit careful with this one. Um... Okay, so I'm adding some of this down, and the brightest colors are often in the shadows, okay? 
So I'm adding it right underneath this kind of um, overhang here. And I'm adding it in the area of the design. See where it's darker in the design itself? I'm just kind of reiterating that. Now I'm not doing this on, it would be really kind of precarious if I was doing this on a white piece of paper, but I'm doing it. This red is on a color that's not too much darker than the red, okay? So you see this like door right here? I can kind of come in here like that and add that little extra red in there like so. It doesn't look good like that, but what you do is you just go in with a lighter tone. Again, pink is kind of the lighter version of red, right? Again, when you start to move in that path, and then you just blend it out with that a little bit. This paper right here is fairly absorbent, so you're not doing great blending work on there with this, but you can blend it enough. You know, this, uh, again, this is, um, I haven't mentioned this in a while, but this is um, the silk paper, which is a semi-gloss, which is fairly close to a matte paper, okay? I'm spending a lot of time on this part of the design. Um, my other trees in here are gonna go really fast, okay? They're going to be just mostly just bold, versifying clair. That's why I'm doing this in um, this, this paper too, so I can use the versifying clair just in my impressions, because it will dry on this you know, closer to matte, porous paper here than the, you know, the glossy I'd have to emboss or something like that with something like Claire. All right, this is kind of a, a beige here, so I'm kind of using the beige as my um, blending tool. You, you know, you can get in here with some colored pencils, that would be good too. Okay, uh, let me see, let me blend that out. That little dark red was almost a little bit too dark, so I can have some residual ink of it in there, but just kind of blend it out like so. All right. Um, I, they, well, they're more absorbent candy, so um, you're not going to be able to kind of pull them around as much um, as you can on a glossy, okay? So a glossy cardstock, it's just not getting absorbed into the paper as much as it is with um, the semi-gloss, and then, of course, the matte. The matte, of course, is going to be the most absorbent, so you're going to have the less, you know, the least amount of residual ink sitting on the surface to blend. All right. All right, let's see. It's going in here. This is a reddish barn. It's kind of moving in the direction of brown. <laughs> Brownish red here. Okay. Now, speaking of that, as I put my finger across there, look at that. I'm picking up all that red on there and I'm getting real smudgy around here. So I need to be careful about that. Luckily, we have the white pigment ink and I'm going to be stamping over this anyway with my bold applications of the tree trunks though. So not to worry. That, you know, this is the type of stuff that panics people, okay? You know, but like I always say in scenic stamping, just cover it up, okay? Now, I'd rather it not be there, of course, but uh, um, uh, if it is, then no problem. There's always things you can do, so um, watch out for that. So again, you know, there was some residual wet ink on there, you know, from this, you know, almost matte paper, okay? All right, so let's see here. Um, what was I gonna, okay, let me see what I can do here in terms of uh, a little bit of white pigment ink on this roof. I'm not gonna add too much of it, okay? This is going to be my kind of like snow-ish type of application here. I don't do this a lot, but on this one I thought it might be cool. All right, so I do three sides like this, okay? I don't often like mask off the entire roof line, and then I apply it kind of irregularly, okay? I don't do it over the whole thing. Hello, Carrie! Hello, Charlene. If I didn't say, if I missed someone on the the board here, if you said hi, uh, hello, and uh, uh, just uh, having some fun here with the uh, with the barn. Now I'm fussing over this barn. I don't take this much time with the barn, like ever. <laughs> <laughs> but on this one right here, just so much of it is going to be, you know, kind of the bold 
impressions. Where did my white inks go? My brilliance ink. Here it is. Okay, can find it. All right. Um, okay, so three-sided things. So I'm just going to put this over some of the rooftop, okay? I'm not going to just like white it all out, okay? I just think this will be a little bit better to, oh, I don't know, have it a little bit varied, okay? Uh, La Plume markers, yes, those were alcohol ones. Oh, you could play around with your, you know, La Plume or Tombow water-based ones too. I mean, we used to do, you know, pre-alcohol pens. I mean, that's what everyone was using for everything. You know, it was all watercolor pens, okay? And they worked fine. Um, but alcohol pens on this one, though, I mean, they're just going to um, be a little bit more um, non-disruptive to the white ink uh, I mean, the uh, dye based ink impressions of the, you know, the barn there. So I don't have to worry about them. It's kind of smearing any of that. Okay, that doesn't look good at all. But what I'll do is I'll just kind of add in some stronger applications of the white ink on there, you know, and that will create a stronger um, application of white. The white inks go on here very translucent so we get all that color showing through so it's kind of muddy right now but again you know we have all these other pens and media that you can use too so if i add that on the top of there i'll just transition it off with some additional pigment ink okay so all right so that is that and i'm trying to think if i should do this right now i think when you add stuff like this these pens, they're fairly raised um, in terms of the amount of ink, so maybe I should do this afterwards, after I stamp my trees, or should I do that first? No, the versifying clear impressions are going to be really wet for a while, right? Okay, let's do this first right here. Trying to work it out. As I said, if you've been on here long enough, I, I, I just mentioned, hey, I'm going to be really kind of winging it here in terms of my experimentation on this piece with certain areas so it might be a little bit rough so you're just you're seeing how i try to you know try to figure things out as i go along here so hello cecile i appreciate you watching the vids or checking them out okay so adding these in like so okay and i'll just kind of add this around like this Kind of shake it up. It doesn't have to be even because you can just even it out with some additional um, uh, white pigment ink, okay? The white pigment ink for me, it's like my, I don't know, uh, media savior <laughs> when it comes to many, many scenes. Believe it, you know. Believe it or not, okay? That's why these days I try to really point things out to people while I'm working on them. Notice how ugly it looks right now, you know? And I'll show you, you know, basically how it comes together in the end result, okay? Okay, here we go. Okay, I need a little bit more ink on this one. Uh, hello, Jen. Good to see you here. Okay, I need... Let's see. Let's go with a little bit more ink here. Okay. One of my white ink pads is a lot juicier than the other one. Okay. I keep one fairly dry. And the other one is, I don't know, I guess reasonably wet. But also I keep one for my cotton ball, but I'm using my non-cotton ball one here. Okay. All right. That looks a little bit better. I need it a little bit more opaque, okay? All right, so there is that application. I'm getting completely messy around on my desk right here. But let's go in here and... Okay, a really rough transition, right, from snow to barn, okay? I kind of want it that way, though, you know, because I want this barn to be reasonably, I don't know, whatever, striking. Okay, let's go in and let's get rid of some of those smudgies a little bit. I'm not trying to get rid of them all, but just 
kind of obscure them a little bit. Okay, so I'm taking some of this and I'm putting a little bit of this white pigment ink into this area right here, okay? Just to transition that barn a little bit more gracefully into the surrounding area, okay? Like that. See that? I mean, it was really harsh down there, but you put a little bit in there. Same thing with over here. I'm working it from the bottom up, okay? About like so. Yeah, that's looking better. And as you move up, you kind of use a lighter tap, so you're going a little bit thicker and stronger, and then you transition it off like that, okay? All right, so that is that. Let's put a little bit more on. I like that right in there. More fog. And two, I mean, if you want some of that, you know, back up against those trees in the background, you can do some of that as well. It's going to be subtle because it's a very light white against a light blue, okay? If that those background trees were darker, then, you know, it'd stand out more. But the contrast is very minimal, so, you know, it doesn't make for a big change there. Okay, so... Ah, very cool, froggy, froggy fresh. Okay, let's see. I am a little bit conscious of that. Uh, um, who said that with the red there? Pen, yeah, Penny. Uh, I am a little bit conscious of that, but the red is largely dry now, okay? So I don't think it's a little bit sticky, but yeah, you can't even tell my fingers are all kind of gummed up anyway. Um, one of the things I learned with pigment inks or um, the not pigment, ink, but the um, what's that? What's that ink that's in between a dye and a pigment ink? The uh, uh, hybrids, hybrid inks. OK. Um, and I learned this from uh, um, Moon and the Maker that makes those hybrid inks that sent me out some. They have um, the Moonlight Duos, which have white ink, and then they have the colored ink, and you're supposed to mix them together. But then to just, you know, clean up the white pad again, all you do is just scrape it out and it's like white again. It's really amazing. <laughs> in terms of the revelation, I thought it would have totally polluted it, but, you know, they make it where, you know, those things are in combination with one another, so you can get that kind of varied look to any of the um, inks. So it's the hybrid ink on one side and just pure white pigment ink on the other. It's like a dual pad. It's kind of cool. Okay, so there we go. It's looking foggier and foggier like that. And see, I'm kind of obscuring my little smudgy fingerprints all over the place like that. Okay, now this is going to look really, really bold when I put in those VersaFine Claire impressions. Um, it's a kind of a, a strange notion to do that over the top of this, but let's do it anyway. All right, so again, if you just logged on to, this is going to be a slimline mirror card like that. There that barn is in the snow down there. This is like representing, I don't know, what, like a frozen frozen pond or lake or something like that. Be cool to have some ice skaters or something like that on there, huh? <laughs> okay, so let's go with our trees. Our trees are going to be really something in this one, I think. It's going to be... I mean, I don't know, I'm usually stamping these things against um, not maybe a reduced contrast or something like that, but this one's, these ones are really going to contrast hard against um, this background right here because it's just not dark, especially this lower section. So let's just see how it goes. Okay. All right. Versifying Claire. 
I'm talking about smudgies and stuff like that. Do I have all of this set to go? I don't want to be working on this a lot after I stamp these out because um, these are going to be wet for a while. Um, I don't know. Let's just do it. Okay, so let's go. I don't want to stamp this up higher, like up here. That would represent, you know, this is like a, I don't know, like a giant sequoia or something like that. So I don't want to stamp it up higher than the, the barn, okay? All right, so let's see. I'm stamping this over some white pigment ink in here. I'm hoping I get a nice, dark, deep impression with this. Okay. Um... Yeah, ice fishing would be cool. Has anyone ever done ice fishing here? <laughs> I haven't, but I've always thought it would be really awesome. Holding this down, because I just don't know, you know, how this is going to print over the top of the white pigment ink that I've already applied. And the white pigment ink probably is not completely dry even though I heat set it, so I'm just kind of holding it a little bit longer. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, so uh, let's, do, let's do another one on this side. We need something fairly bold and strong. Don says, I have, of course. So does everyone in Maine, you know, do you do ice fishing? You got a long winter out there, huh? The first time I went to Maine, I was driving up to uh, my client in West Rockport from Portland, okay, the airport. And it's like all these little, you know, places all along this road, it had lobster roll, you know, or lobster rolls, lobster. I was thinking, what is a lobster? I didn't even know what a lobster roll was. Um, but then someone, uh, someone made one for me when I was at this um, one store and uh yeah awesome okay and now i'm going to tone in the you know these trees a little bit too they're just not going to be like bare like that so um i'll have to figure that out i might have to heat set this a little bit okay so let's go with this over here like about like that so yeah it's coming along and so we have a little bit of depth here now i guess huh Yeah, that driving on the lakes, I don't know, that sounds really cool. Froggy Fresh, you, you lived in Russia and you did ice fishing in Russia, that sounds cool. That sounds cool and awfully cold. Yeah, I've seen those shacks out there that people just set up a shack, you know, for the entire season, right? All right, let's go, let's go, I don't know, maybe like here. Something like this. I'm going up a little bit higher, even if it's a little bit like quarter of an inch or something like that. It would represent trees that are a little bit farther off. Okay. My client um, pen ventures in uh, in uh, Maine took me out. You know, you got to. Someone from out of town, they're taking you out to, you know, lobster dinner and, they, you know, you go into a restaurant and it's, um, you pay for, you, you order it by, you know, whatever size lobster you want. And they explained it, well, you know, if you're going to get like a pound and a half or something, you might as well just get the two pounds because there's a certain amount of it's going, it's going to be the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the shell anyway. So, it's like, okay, you know, I'll just do whatever you say. And it was so much lobster. I was so stuffed. And it was awesome. But um, I was getting really stuffed with everything. And I still had that claw left. <laughs> I remember looking at that claw thinking, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't want to wimp out, though. 
Uh, so I did eat it. And like I said, it was good, but man, that was a big meal. I don't, I don't remember what size. I thought it was two, I don't know, like two and a, two pounds or something like that. That's not an insignificant amount of, uh, of uh, lobster meat, even after the shell. Wow, that is something. Did you catch anything? That's what I want to know, Froggy Fresh. Okay, I'm adding another tree back there. Okay. All right, so we got those in there. We're going to have to anchor them down with a little bit of tone though, okay? So let's see what this is looking like at this point in time with our reflections. That's going to be the big payoff here, you know? Right? Look at that. That is pretty insane. I'm telling you, you get two scenes for the price of one, you know, when you're doing these mirror cards. Even if you don't do anything in the bottom part, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, that would look good as is. I think I'm going to put some stuff down there, but... Uh, you know, I don't know. And I think it looks pretty awesome as is like that. Maybe it was a pound and a half. I don't think I did two pounds now that I think about it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, this might have to be a two-part piece because I did those in the Versafine Claire and I don't think I can color them right now because as I'm heat setting this, those are not drying immediately. I, I do I, oh boy. I guess I could have embossed those, right? Claire emboss and then color them in, right? Huh, wait, let, should I do that? Maybe we, maybe we should, but now I, I think I've dried it too much though. <laughs> I don't think it'll, I don't think that embossing powder is going to stick to it. You know what this is right here? The dye based inks are in the back. Okay. So that kind of sealed it off a little bit. All right. The bottom part of these impressions are dry. I don't know if you can see that. See how shiny they're up top and it's like less so down below like that. Uh, let me just see if I can color these in. I'll just test it. So this is a this is an oil-based ink. So let me just use some uh, I don't know. Just let me just use the dyes on there and let me see if I can color it in without kind of smearing it around. I think it will smear around though. But let's just see if I it won't smear too much. Okay. Okay. So why not? Uh, let's go in with. A memento blue. Now they, these are kind of winter tones, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm not gonna do it in like, you know, brown or something like that. He could, but since this is already blue in the background with this one, you know, I don't know. Let's just let's just start building up some tone. Let's see how it goes here. Okay. Okay. So. Uh. I don't know. So far, so good, I guess. Yeah, it's not blending with it at all. No, it is. It's picking up a little bit. It's usually, if it's really bad, it, I would see it on my applicator, like, immediately. I don't know, maybe the heat setting did it, you know? I don't know. It's not obscuring the imagery, you know, that I can see. We might be in luck here. Okay, so getting a little smudgy up there. Okay. So I'll be careful, kind of. All right, let's see. You like these trees, uh, Penny? I use them all the time. They're really fantastic for framing a 
composition very strongly, of course, you know. All right, let's see. Going over here like this. All right. Okay, now if you've seen, I have a video on lighting, okay? And there's a fun little trick you can do with objects like this, okay? And you can create um, kind of a spirit of light. You just kind of pick out some kind of vanishing point, okay? And let's just do it. Let's just do it. It'll be right up on top of that barn. Or let's, let's take it. It'll be from that barn right there, maybe, okay? We'll say that the lighting is coming from right behind that point. And um, let's see, I'm going to take this and you just go like this and that's going to be your shadow direction, okay? Every time you go, so see it kind of shifts like that up. So I'm going to the bottom of this tree, okay? And I'm going to go like this to the base of that point of the tree, okay? Go like this. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that, but just in general, that's kind of the direction there, okay? So go like this. Okay. And let's see. I have to come at from this side on the other part of the tree, like this. Okay. So kind of see, you see those, you know, shadows. This is a little bit too, I need to work on more narrow piece. But uh, then over here, okay, I'm just going like that. And there's the angle for that shadow right there, okay? Now we're not taking into consideration, you know, the terrain and the, you know, the, the shape of the terrain and everything like that. I don't think, you know, I don't get into that, like doing stuff like that too much, you know, I don't, complicate things you know with you know having to be exact or anything like that but anyways there's the shadows kind of um developing there i went a little bit too much with that one but this will be darker anyways i'll probably go to black over here okay but there's your shadow development like so Thanks for binge, I, I noticed you did binge watch those videos and thanks for the questions. Always good asking all those questions, you know. I always say, uh, ask questions if you don't, uh, you know, if anything isn't uh, obvious. Good night, Donna. Uh, hello, Elizabeth. Froggy Fresh got her stamps today. You can do, uh, let's see, um, drop me a note and let me know how things are going. Better yet, if you guys ever run into any questions or any kind of things, issues, photograph it and then send me um, a file, okay? Or if you just want, you know, want to show me your progress, do that, you know? It doesn't have to be like a technique or media, you know, compatibility question or something of that sort. Okay, so you see those shadows kind of developing down there? All right, now that is in the blue. Now let's go with um, black, okay? Uh, since the objects are stamped in black, sometimes we just, you know, that's a good tone to kind of utilize to anchor them down. Um, let's see. All right, let's go with this again. All right. I'll kind of come up into the tree as well, okay? So I'm taking that shadow and just going right up into the tree like that, okay? All right. And I need a smaller applicator so I'm just going to take that and really make it narrow like so okay let's see let me approach this from upside down here okay like that I blot it off so I'm using kind of a much weaker version of black okay 
use a gray. You can always go, you can always go darker, okay? You, you guys have me thinking about uh, fish and uh, lobster and I'm starting to get hungry. Okay, let's see. Really kind of adding that um, strong corner vignette down here. Well, it's not a vignette just in the corner like that, but kind of anchoring that edge down like so. Okay, so see those you know shadows in there? Um, I don't know, it kind of brings um, a sense of drama into the scene. Um, oh yeah, yeah, so Froggy Fresh, remember, it's all about those um, big saturations of your lightest colors, okay? And if it doesn't look bright, what you do is you go back in and remember, when you move through a progression of tones, oftentimes you got to go back in and add in more of one of the lighter tones again, like right over the top of it. And then remember to, um, to uh, you know, if it doesn't look, if it looks really great and, you know, super deep and vibrant, and if it dries dull, then just simply spray seal, okay? Who's that here? I should I I should have the brownies? <laughs> yeah, the spray sealing. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so what I'm doing right here is I'm just trying to add on a little bit of tone to the uh what is it? The right side of these trees. Because they're being kind of uh whatever, left side illuminated, okay? I, the thing that I'm really surprised at, I'm, I'm really surprised that the Versafine Claire dried as much as it seems to have. I mean, it's not completely dry, but it's, it's you know, it's not giving me any problems in terms of, uh, you know, smearing that I can see. Um, it is smearing a little bit, but... It's not uh, not to the point where it's a problem. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, that's very true. Use that contrast to make the uh, lighter tones pop out. Play contrasts against one another. You can play contrasts in terms of light and dark but you can also play the contrast in terms of the bright and dull too. Uh, yep. A lot of people got started with Stampin' Up. In the early days before Stampin' Up, the, the big thing that got people really kind of hooked into rubber stamping was embossing. And then that, the biggest um, thing, entity, or thing that got people into stamping during a certain span of years um, was definitely Stampin' Up. Such a such a significant entity in terms of uh, kind of introducing people to the uh, to the to the medium. Okay, so going a little bit darker up top here too, okay. All right. I forgot those different types of media out there that people use that's like a three-dimensional um, uh, snow application. It's actually kind of raised, it's like puffy. Um, that'd be kind of cool down here. All right, let's see this pond here with those trees. I'm looking at it in the uh, 
on my screen here. I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's now add in some additional imagery or just textures maybe, okay? Let's see here. I'm going to go with my white, um, my large white pen, okay? Yeah, Jeannie's been stamping a long time with those stamps. She is in the gallery section of the Stampscapes website. And as I was mentioning in a little tour of that video <laughs> on a live stream, um, I was saying Jeannie went through her uh, different periods of uh, different styles of, uh, you know, um, usage of the, uh, of the stamps, which is cool to see. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of texture in here. In here, see, I mean, uh, like these little smudgy fingerprint things too. I mean, you kind of add in this texture down here, which makes it look better anyway, but it also eradicates, you know, things that uh, maybe you didn't want, like a, a big fingerprint. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want your own fingerprint in a scene though, right? In a card, like a big nasty fingerprint. But it's not too big, big of a deal. You know what I mean? If you have your, it's like the signature of the, uh, the you know, the, the creator in there. You know, we have your, we have the evidence, you know, from fingerprint uh, identification. Okay, so adding this around. It's kind of, it's very subtle texture because I'm adding it, you know, it's white into a very light shadow area. Okay. That a little big, quite a big smudgy up there. Oh, that's actually a piece of like paper towel. Okay, so areas in between here. There's a lot of smudges out there. No, no I don't really care about that, but let's just take them out while I'm doing this anyway. Now, see, this would be a perfect spot for a couple, like, crystals, okay? But you can't do that on mirror card because you're closing this, and you can't have that raised dot, like, indenting the, uh, you know, the, uh, um, the silver, the silver foil bottom portion. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of snow. I noticed Ivan Earl. This is referencing a piece... Um, that's inspired by the artist Ivan Earl. And uh, so I'm totally copying him. I'm ripping him off right here with a little bit of snow on the side of the tree. It's like, a, I don't know, whatever. You know, the snow flurry built it up, uh, you know, on the edges like that or something. Yeah, I guess it's like a little bit of lighting as well, like that, okay? All right, so that's um, a little bit of that, but let, let's blend that out a little bit now too. All right, let's see. Ah, you taught Stampscapes. Did I know that, Don? That is cool. Thanks so much for teaching the classes and uh, spreading the word of the line and techniques, etc. Always appreciate that. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to add in, I think, I wasn't doing this before because I didn't think this was uh, dry enough, but I think it is, okay. So let's add in a little bit of this kind of frothy mist here to the base of it. And it'll also kind of mellow out, you know, a little bit of my shadows. The sh shadows are a little bit harsh. I mean, they look okay, but, you know, just adding it, kind of adding that little bit of visual continuity between foreground and background, right? You have this low-line fog um, around the, uh, the barn. Why not have a little bit of it around the base of these trees as well, okay? 
or on the side of the tree, kind of facing the light like that. See that right there? Didn't that really soften it up? And we can see it here too. So let's take a look at this. Oh, so let me see if I can do something here. Let me see if we can do something in a very small space right here. So on the side of this um, trunk here, I'll put a little bit of tone like that and I'll vary um, the texture against each other like that. So it's like foggy on one side and sharp on the other side, right? Or light on one side, darker on the other. Now, in order to get to this one right here, you know, it's simple enough to just to mask it off like this, right? And I'll try to get a little bit of that mist or whatever that's curved at the base there on that trunk. So I'll put this like this and we'll do this application. Maybe a, I don't know, Q-tip might be better for this, but something like that, right? Okay. And we'll do the same thing right here. We'll follow suit on this last trunk. So this is kind of blending in the uh, those dots in there as well that were just applied. I think the dots are okay, but then, you know, having this kind of cutting down the contrast between that white dot and the, uh, the darker background just, I don't know, it gives it a little bit more visual harmony like that. So kind of, it makes for a stronger illumination in here too. We're saying that Kind of the light is lighting becomes a little bit stronger here, which might not be a bad idea for the reflected area down below to have stronger lighting. I don't know. Okay, so that is that. Okay, let's see. I don't have as big a hair as uh, Bob Ross. Uh, maybe I should. Maybe I should uh, get a perm. <laughs> okay, let's see how this is looking right now. All right. So there's our tones. I was thinking about. I have a horse here that I was going to add in here. Like right in here. Um, I'll see if I have space for it. I kind of forgot about it, but. Um, Let's see, so it look like that. So the horse would be reflecting in that water, like so. I think it'd look okay. Versifying Claire again. Okay, let, if I do that, let me do it um, towards the end. Okay, so let me look at this down here. Um, I need to figure out if I'm going to add in some foreground in here. I was thinking about some framing with some... Um, Maybe some pine bows or something like that. I'm not sure though. Okay, let me see. I kind of like, oops, like this. Okay, will that frame that off a little bit? Let's give it a try because, you know, like I said, we can always just wipe this stuff off if we don't want it here. So, um, right? That's the good thing about foils. The bad thing? stuff doesn't stick to it as easy so you use stays on or especially the good thing about it is stuff doesn't stick to it so if you don't like it you just wipe it off you know so you always kind of play the um you know the weaknesses make it a strength of something you know a little bit less absorbent slicker paper things will just blend better on it okay the more absorbent the paper is, then you use it for your chalks or, you know, pastels, something like that. Okay. All right. So this, I'm going to have to do a couple of these, I think, on each side. Like I say, we don't have to. Um, or maybe, huh? Let me see. I was saying, so that's dark right there. All right, but I hadn't really thought about doing that in white. 
Let me see something here. I'm debating on whether or not to like emboss it in white. I would be able to see it across these trees right here in the reflection down here, but not in the lighter area. I guess I could, I could I'll add a little bit of snowfall to these ones maybe. Yeah, okay, let me do that. I'll just kind of dust them with a little bit of snow like there's some snow on them or something like that and we'll see how that looks. <laughs> We had a whole tarantula discussion here. If you've just kind of joined in, you have to go back in in the uh, the transcripts here. <laughs> We're talking about uh, tarantulas and people getting eaten up, um, along with uh, uh, lobster uh, lobster rolls. Okay, allow the uh, the ink to transfer over to the uh, the surface. Okay. All right, so that's what that is looking like right now. Okay. It looks like totally um, kind of obscure, but I think the white uh, paint on it will kind of liven that up. Okay. And it just, it, it's not supposed to be very visible. It's just, you know, this is just something that's going to be framing off the bottom composition against uh, all those reflections that are going on the top. So these are just some extra little things. Like I said, you don't even need to do this, really. But why not, you know? Okay, so that's that little... See, that's kind of like framing off this bottom portion. Then I'll kind of frame off this lower portion again down here. We need a like a fishing, like an ice fishing thing on there, huh? Shack, an ice fishing shack. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. These longer things, I always need more space on my desk. If you're working on quarter page scenes all the time, then that's like how much space you have to work on because they're like the encroachment of all the stuff comes in here. So maybe it's good to do like some large format scenes every now and then because you have to clear out more area and tidy up your uh, kind of working space. Okay. Because I don't even need to worry about all these smudges getting on the back of this card because it's just a piece of black cardstock that I used. So if black on black won't even show. All right, uh, let's see. I can flip this upside down because I can access this easier this way. So always just turn the card in the direction that, uh, you know, you can um, have the easiest access to it. Glad you like this grouping here, Kathy. So far, it's been pretty fun. I've done I've done a scene like this in the past, um, but I'm just kind of formatting it into a uh, you know this mirror card um, format just for a little bit of extra drama. And it, again, like I was saying earlier, it's like you're stamping out you know this scene up here. And it's almost like you're getting two scenes for the price of one. I mean, I think it's more, it's almost like three because you have that reflective quality of it going on. Four parakeets, finger chickens. That sounds pretty cool. Um, growing up, um, we had a... Uh, we had we always had either one or two parakeets as pets, and the one that lived the longest, um, I found, it was like I don't know, got out from someone's cage somewhere in the neighborhood, I don't know, blocks away or something like that, and uh, it was flying around. I was too young to be able to grab it though, so I we went and got my mom and said, hey, there's a parakeet out there, and my mom was able to kind of get it, but. 
that parakeet um, by the name of Sapphire because <laughs> it was blue. Um, yeah, we had her for, I don't know, over a decade. I don't know how old it was at the time. Don't know any, you know, have a clue, but. Okay, so I'm getting rid of my some of my little smudgies down here. There's the um, branches in there. I'm going to stamp out some extra little um, water textures. I tend to like those little extra textures on the water's surface. Um, let's go with that. Well, this one right here, sometimes when I stamp that out, when you have these solid areas on your um, foil, you know, a very non-absorbent surface, and you're stamping it out, when you go like this, it's like it doesn't print out in the middle. It's like vacuums it out or something like that on the sides. So, you know, when you're doing those types of things, just go into it kind of knowing that, well, could happen, maybe happen, you know. And again, it's, with, it's within those larger solid um, types of images, okay. All right. Stamping it out. Yeah, see, I don't know if you can see it right down here like the middle part of that rock didn't stamp out. Now, I don't know, you wouldn't see this maybe on frozen pine. Maybe you know, this is like little kind of textures underneath the surface or something like that. I don't know what it represents. I'm doing it in different values as well, okay? I'm gonna do, I was thinking about using my smaller one in conjunction with this one. I might just go with the large though like that. Okay, so that's what we have right here, okay? So it's, I did something similar on the scene uh, yesterday down there at the base like that. Whenever I have stuff in the water, I like to do things, little textures and touches like that, that might represent something maybe below the surface. I know it's hard to see with all this reflective area. Well, let's see what it looks like. I don't know if that's even going to show up down there. Yeah, a little bit, see like that? Yeah, okay, now see, here's these bows here in the foreground like that. I think it's giving it a little bit of added depth. I don't know. I think it looked okay without it, too. Just having it wide open without anything down here. Okay, so let's see. I think I'm going to create a little bit more of a vignette, again, with that base area like that. Well, the cats would definitely be entertained by those parakeet, by a parakeet though, huh, Genie? Okay, let's see. A little bit more of a vignette here. Around on the perimeter, perhaps, okay. I'm being careful not to go over that too strongly because I might lift that image that hasn't yet dried or, you know, Heat, been heat set and sprayed. I'm gonna come in here a little bit too. Okay. Wow, three baby bluebirds, that's something. That reminds me of my parents that took in these uh, baby mockingbirds a few years ago, well, several years ago. I think they called some kind of shelter or something like that, bird sanctuary, and they came out and got them, but they took care of the birds for a few uh, a few days. <laughs> Billy Bob and Thornton, huh? That's funny. Quite a good actor, versatile. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's heat set this. OK, 
Okay, let's see. Let me get back to my screen here. Someone texted me. All right, let's add in some um, white touches to the um, areas down here. This is going to be impossible for you to see. Yeah, those birds were something. Every time my parents came around with a little tweezer, you know. Ee, ee, ee. <laughs> it was, sure was fun, though. And it happened to be one time when I was visiting them, they had them. Okay, let's see. Let's add in some snow to these bows right here, okay? or highlights or whatever. I guess when we're doing this too, we're kind of reiterating what's going on in the upper scene as well in terms of lighting direction. Huh. All right. Okay, so it just looks like that. It looks at it, it looks kind of crazy as it is, but I think when it's being used as that reflection, it'll look pretty good. All right, let's hit this other side like this. Okay, I'm going to put some of this on some of these um, rocks down here as well. I'm going to put a little highlight on the top surface of some of these rocks, okay? I mean, it, just this as a statement down here looks really bizarre. <laughs> but again, I'm hoping that in the reflection that looks kind of cool, okay? Okay, let's see here. Okay. Yeah. It might stand out too much, those um those highlights like that. That's like that's like climb you know it's like a crawling with a little dots like that. I think it looks it can look okay, but let's let's layer that one extra step, okay? Let me go on with a different image. You can use the same image, but just put it across there like that. It's all, all those little highlights are right in the forefront, okay? So I'm going to push them back with some additional imagery, okay? So I'm just going with this juniper like that. I'm going to put it like right here and right over here. I don't know, it might, it, it might even give it extra depth as well. Okay, so. I'll do I'll do this video in a a time lapse four times the speed voiceover <laughs> crystal fire. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to watch this one again, you know what I mean? From the beginning. The, the videos where I really have far less of an idea of how, you know, they're going to come out. I just totally skewed that right there. Um they're, uh, I don't know, they're very exploratory in terms of the pacing. <laughs> okay, so that is that image right down there. I totally skewed it like that. It's, it's one of the things that I mentioned when doing um, foil pieces with big slippery, you know, thick pigment inks like this, that you have to watch out when you lay that down because it's easy to skew it like that. But on this one right here, I don't think it's so important that that stuff in the scent, uh, in the, the foreground, dark against dark, really matters too much. Okay, let's see. Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh, I, I forgot, not on this scene, but 
I was thinking I want to do one of those reverse ink lifting processes on a on another mirrored card. I do, I've done it before with the rainbow holographic, but I want to do it again. Because when I stamped out that juniper there and I lifted it, I think I got a little bit of a reverse impression in the previously stamped pine bows. I'm, it might have lifted some ink as opposed to just transferring it. Okay, so there that is. So it's framed off the scene a little bit more on the base, okay? So here we go here, okay? About like so. With a slimline card, it's it's not as high like going that way. For the for the for the length of it, like that. So that's what that looks like right there. Okay, now one of the things I'd like to do, we have a lot of open space in here, but let me see. I guess I could I guess I could stamp text in here that's white. Although we won't be able to see it very much over here. Because it's all that white reflecting down here. Usually I go a little bit darker in my scenes, but I think I can put a quote over here and get that cool kind of hovering text look, or I can put it down here. I was thinking about um, this quote right here. Um, it just says, in the woods we return to reason and faith. I just like the uh, the typography of this one. It's a barn in the woods, you know, I don't know, early settlers or something like that, maybe. But um, I just thought this one would look good because, again, it's it's a, an elongated format here. So <laughs> having an elongated format, quote, just kind of fits that space. Uh, it, it harmonizes with that really nicely. So I thought we would do that one. Um, Let's see. Crystal Fire Creations is on vacation, so she can walk, you know, she can watch this, you know, this five hour video again. I'll put it at half speed then, maybe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so, uh, so the reason and faith, I'm thinking right in here because I think that will show up really nicely in that shadow area right in here. But I think it would look also, you know, pretty good down here too. No, I think it and I think it back up here is better, huh? Okay, so let's give it a shot. And again, if you haven't seen these videos before with the uh, the foils, like I said, um if you don't like something that you lay down on the foil with these pigment inks, the brilliance inks dry on here, okay, but you'll need to spray seal them to really affix them. Okay, but if you don't get what you like in your impression, then you can always wipe it off and re-stamp. Okay. With word stamps, I always kind of spend a little bit more time in the inking process to make sure that they're evenly inked up for my impressions. With any other stamp, I usually don't care too much if it's a little bit lighter or darker on in some area. Um, but in text and words, probably a good idea to hit it pretty evenly. Make sure I don't have it upside down. <laughs> I've been kind of doing them a little bit at an angle lately. Okay. I don't want to skew that one. Sometimes I get, I don't position things with a positioner, but um, yeah, I don't know. It'd probably be a good idea, but sometimes I start, you know, I get all my quotes and word stamps and they're all straight for a while. Then for like a few cards, they're a little bit skewed and angled. I don't know, maybe my, uh, my inner ear is off or something like that. Uh, that one was that one's not too not too bad. That's pretty close to straight, I think. So like that. I'm hiding it right here. <laughs> Don't look too close. It's a little bit off, but not too bad. 
Okay, so there's our floating text like that. See that right there? This is almost so big. It's almost, you can have like a couple of them, but look at that quote right in that space like that. I really like that type of uh, look right in there. Okay, so anyways, this is the, oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about the horse, okay. Let's see, where did it go? Okay. All right. Um, let me do it in, uh, okay, let me do it in the Claire. I, I was debating on whether or not to do it with the Brilliance. The Brilliance, the horse will look lighter, okay. Let's make it, let's make it look fairly bold. Let's make it match the trees, okay. In terms of the uh, richness of the uh, the black. Okay. Um, let's wipe off some of the feet because he's kind of standing in snow, right? So I'll get that a little bit. How deep is the snow? Is how much you wipe off the feet. I'm going to have it as kind of a like a not too thick of a snow thing. Okay, I don't want to put them like one foot, you know, in the snow or something like that. Or a foot deep. Okay. All right, don't miss, don't do a headless horse right here. Plenty of nice, flat, even pressure. All right. Here's like that. Okay, I need to heat set that a little bit and put a little bit of that fog around him too so he matches everything. I think that dried really fast on me. I was watching and it turned from kind of a shiny black to kind of a matte black, which I assume meant it dried. Okay, so let's see, um, white pigment ink. Maybe it might be better with a uh, Q-tip or something like that, kind of more narrow, but uh, let's just go with this and see how it goes. Okay. I really don't want that horse to be wet still. And then you go like this, right? And then you pick up some of that, and then you're tapping around, and you're getting these black dots everywhere. Okay. I'm shocked that VersaFine Claire dried that fast. Did you guys, do all of you know that dries that fast? I don't know, he's, he's, uh, he's looking, um, someone put some salt there is, is what he's doing. He's getting that last little bit of salt lick. All right, let's see what that did here in terms of a visual. Huh, yeah, pretty cool, I guess. Let's see. All right. Let's get that mounted up and formatted. He's like digging away some of the snowfall there and getting some of that grass underneath the uh, the uh, the snow. All right, uh, let's see here. It's such a long piece right here. I mean, I you know, this is a lot of tape, huh? I don't know, mine, that one with the heat setting dried awfully fast. Not these trees, I guess, because there was so, you know, there's just so much bigger. Okay, the last time I, when I did it yesterday, I, I didn't leave enough of a space, I think. 
between the bottom foil and the top scene, so I'm leaving a little bit more more of a gap here. All right, here we go. I brayer this a lot, but I you know you don't have to brayer. All right, so that is the scene. I'm, let's see. There we go, like that. Yeah, this is closing much better for me. And open it up like so. There's the uh, kind of that. I like these angles right here from the the trees. How it those angles are like that. It's like a V. Then it kind of goes like that. I like the movement of that. Those trees over there. Look at this one. Maybe I shouldn't have put so much stuff here in the foreground. I don't know. Because I can't see this tree in the reflection as much. But I don't know. Maybe it's not as important. And then we have that floating text. I almost like that floating text even more in here. I know it's such a big scene like that. But um, uh, anyway. <laughs> so the red barn. The red, uh, the red barn and the snow or something like that. The snow and the barn or... Red and red and white. Maybe that would be a good uh, title for this piece, something like that. I don't know. I think that little that little horse in there. I don't know. He added to the uh, little bit of the character of the piece. Maybe I don't know. Um, so, anyways, um, like I said in a couple of the previous videos here, um, the one with the um, deer on kind of that little ledge. I think going kind of more simple in the top compositions for these mirror scenes like this, you know, there's more contrast in between these things. So it's easy to see the, um, that reflection down here better than, you know what I mean? Than going too busy up here, like with background stuff that I tend to do on like other types of scenes. But if I know I'm going for this reflection, I try to create as, you know, more contrast in here, just this red barn or these trees or, you know, some bold, deer or something like that standing in a clearing or something like that so yeah anyway so uh yeah so pretty fun here um yeah you won't have to uh uh wait that long not 30 years 30 minutes more like it <laughs> um yeah. Uh, you know what I should do? You know, a lot of times when I do these types of scenes too, like this, these types of formats, I'll do a quick version of this, you know, that you can do in, I try to aim for like 30 minutes or something like that on my quick scene versions. So naturally, if we do a, a quarter page scene, and one of the things I was thinking about doing is stamping out this barn, like on a red piece, piece of red paper or something like that, and then cutting it out. Well, I'd have to think about kind of that space in the middle there or something like that. But just pasting it right down on a card that has a couple of these trunks on there. I mean, that would be like incredibly fast. And, uh, you know, you can do something on the top or something like that. And that would be a really cool version, a quick version of this, you know, this larger format scene like this. But going kind of with a slim line like this, you do have extra space out there for a little bit of extra drama. And of course, you know, that reveal like that, you know, just having more kind of imagery across a, um, a larger area can be fun too. So, but like I said, there's something to be said for, you know, a 30 minute version of this, you know, that's, I don't know, kind of equally as effective, you know, if not as large. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, Sandra, collect them all. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as I've mentioned before, you know, with these um, types of mirror cards, I would recommend trying them out. I think they're really dramatic, and they're just so much fun to do, you know, especially when you start kind of checking them out as they're developing and seeing that reflection down there. It's just... It's just, it's so fun, you know, to reveal that type of thing going on in that space. Speaking of that, let me grab my little white. I'm going to grab, I'm going to make a little tweak here. I was just looking at something down here. Uh, let me see. Let me clean this off. But yeah, these are so much fun to do. And that just, while you're working on this, you know, usually when you're working on a card, 
Um, I don't know, there, there are some surprises that go on, but this one's like an immediate kind of um, thing for even me as I'm working on it, you know, just to see it in that reflection is just, it's just so much fun. And, you know, I don't know, and maybe it's because I haven't done a lot of them. It's just still, there's a lot of um, surprise and variation. Uh, the Mirror Cardstock is a silver foil um, cardstock. Um, some of them are a little bit more like brushed aluminum. So um, just kind of be careful about that. Later on when I format this, um, the replay on this, um, on all these videos, I put links to it down there so you can reference it, you know. You don't have to buy it, you know, but I put links to all of those um, materials that are used on here. The, my main reason for getting this version of it, um, this brand of um, ink, I mean, uh, not ink, I'm doing the ink right now, that's what I'm thinking of, um, is that it was the cheapest, <laughs> but it's also, I found it's some of the most mirrored because I bought other versions of the uh, silver foil. I've ordered it from other people or other manufacturers just to see what it'll look like. And some of them, yeah, you know, like I said, they're not as mirrored. They're like, you know, again, they're like brushed foil. So, um, oh, here, let me do this too down here. Or brushed aluminum, not brushed foil. So I wasn't even thinking, I wasn't thinking foil mirror cards when I got this foil, okay? Okay, so I added some of this little um, texture down here, kind of as a little final touch, I guess. But do you see where I put it? Uh, let's see if you can see that right here. See those little types of marks right in there? I mean, I added a little bit with the white paint pen, but I just did that, the white in dark with that little stamp down there. See that right there, as far as the texture goes? And then we have some of those white ones down there, like that. Let's see. Yeah, they stand out a little bit, like that. See this down here? Right, that the, the white uh, pigmenting compressions on the, the surface like that. So you can kind of mix and match a little bit or not mix and match, but um, vary, you know, those things. So you can see those little white things going across those. Can you see it going across those reflections down there? I don't know. I'm kind of geeking out on the little kind of contrasts and things like that. But those are the things that I really like seeing down here, these little things kind of floating against the, you know, the background like that. So, yeah. All right, so again, I don't know, I might find other things to do on this one. If I do, I'll mention it in the comments section or the description section of the uh, the video if I do anything else in this. But for right now, I think this is largely done. Um, yeah, I think it made for a pretty cool scene uh, with that reflection of that red barn. The red barn, I think I can use a little bit more of a warming up. I might go in there with a little bit more of a warmer red and just add a slight uh, temperature change to it. But I'm going to let all this dry here before I do anything of that. And sometimes it's good to just kind of sit on something and to uh, go back to it later and kind of with, with fresh eyes. But um, yeah. All right. So thanks again all for checking this out. Always great to see all of you. To read, always great to read you all. Don't have nightmares of uh, tarantulas and uh, lobster, lobster claws and stuff like that tonight. Today, whatever time it is for you guys. And uh, yeah, the red barn, red and white. All right, let's see here. See you all in the next stream. Always have a great time with you all. Great seeing you all. Thanks as always for logging in. 
And uh, yeah, we'll see uh, the at the next uh, the next uh, the next the next meeting <laughs> the next meeting of the minds here reading of the minds. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Jeannie. Froggy Fresh, good to see you. Looking forward to seeing what you do with your your pieces. Penny, post your pieces on there on a uh, uh, Facebook or whatever. Send me, send me, uh, send me, send me files and let me see what, uh, see what you're doing. We'll get you doing all of it, uh, again, instantaneously. I can fast track you to the results that you're looking for. It's always kind of the same type of thing. There's always like three or four little easy little tweaks that, uh, that, uh, that I have people do, um, that make all the difference in every aspect of it. You know the composition, color, blending, etc. Um, sometimes it's a matter of um, uh, the media and surface compatibilities and things like that too. But yeah, we can fast track you to uh, getting whatever results you're going after, and hopefully even more. All right. So signing off again, and we'll see you. Have a good night. And yeah. Always a lot of fun and always appreciate it. I'm letting everyone kind of uh, add their uh, last comments here. There's always this uh, delay here, so it's always kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know when I'm cutting someone off. <laughs>